I'm a farmer. I've farmed for almost 40 years on my family's farm in Southwest Washington. Um, and when I was, uh, you know, growing up in college and learning the, you know, how to be a farmer and all that, I was taught, especially phosphorus, you have extra phosphorus in the soil, it's like money in the bank. The way we have had uh, created a fertilizer supply is by mining it from phosphate rock. And uh, that hasn't been a problem because in the United States we had uh, some of the world's best reserves. Uh, but those reserves uh, have been hit hard and they are beginning to run out. The easily extractable sources of phosphorus are really concentrated in one country, Morocco. Um, great if you're the king of Morocco, not so great if you're a farmer that needs that nutrient. So we've been shoveling this mined phosphorus onto fields and then uh, one way or another it's been leaving the field, either through the crops, which are taken up by human and livestock, or it's been leached away or eroded away. So we've kind of had this one-way trip of this vital nutrient from our fields to the ocean, essentially. What we've learned is that too much phosphorus can contribute to pollution issues. Phosphorus and the buildup of phosphorus in soil is a concern. The phosphorus that's attached to soils uh, gets in those waters and can cause water quality problems. And so with nutrient recovery, what we're trying to say is uh, phosphorus lasts forever. There's no reason that we can't reclaim it uh, make sure it doesn't leave the fields uh, as readily and reclaim it from the food we eat and the livestock eat. So trying to balance those sources of phosphorus and nitrogen especially uh, has been one of the key goals of this Struvite project that Dr. Harrison and WSU are working on. We're not only capturing the phosphorus here, but the idea is to reconnect it with forage growers in eastern Washington. So during this last year we've begun to work with alfalfa growers in the state got two different growers in particular um, that have agreed to apply uh, the struvite, but we found out that the alpha producers are really interested in uh, struvite as a phosphorus source. And again, I think one of the reasons is we've got a material that's got more of a medium rate release of phosphorus, so it more matches the, the uptake by the crop. We can now pull phosphorus from pretty much any waste stream. Uh, we can do it very efficiently in the 89-90% uh, uh, range. Uh, and the resulting struvite fertilizer is turning out to be uh, a, a, an amazing fertilizer. Uh, unlike a conventional phosphate fertilizer, uh, it doesn't start to release its nutrients. It only releases its nutrients uh, when it receives a certain chemical input from the plant roots. Uh, and it so happens that the release rate is roughly the same as what the plant needs. So what we've seen in experiments is that uh, the struvite will last for the entire uh, crop cycle uh, and it appears that it could even there could still be quite a bit of nutrient left for a second crop cycle uh, in terms of how it's slow release characteristics uh, and it's easy to transport and it is a dry weight and it's odorless and uh, we think that this could really be a key part of a, a, a recovery loop. Cutting our uh, fertilizer application down by one application a year would actually be super beneficial because um, it costs us every time the fertilizer applicator has to come out and spread our fields and it costs us about about nine dollars an acre every time they come out and apply. Um, so cutting that cost down per cutting will save us probably about five, ten grand a year depending on how many fields are spread and how many um, fields are applied. Basically completes the cycle that we send alfalfa to the dairyman. The dairyman uses the, the uh, alfalfa, comes out as the manure, and we're basically bringing that uh, phosphorus that we have uh, exported to the dairyman back to the farm that may have grown that uh, in the first place. You know, we take their struvite, put it on our fields, and then we end up selling our hay back to them and kind of just have it as a, um, a cycle where it kind of benefits both of us, where they get rid of their, um, their waste products to us, and then we end up producing a product that we can in turn give back to them, and it's just kind of a repeat cycle that um, benefits both parties. We need to be recycling those nutrients, and they're valuable, and if we can get those nutrients in a, in a transportable and a marketable form, uh, that can go back into the food supply in truly a, a, an organic type cycle, uh, recycling those nutrients through the food to our cows, to the feed, back to you know, food and feed production and other places. The long-term benefits, uh, obviously the one that all of us farmers would like is we would like to see this be profitable as well. 
And so, you know, our long-term hope and vision is, is that as we perfect this technology and the chemistry and the process in particular with Struvite, that this will create a cycle where we can use that phosphorus and recycle it back because it is not only, it's one of the essential main three nutrients that we need for food and feed and fiber production, but it's also not recyclable. You have to mine it and there's a limited supply. You're taking that phosphorus from an area that is high concentration that could be an environmental problem to an area that is deficient. And to be able to have a means to cycle that uh, through is the excitement of this particular project. 